briefly. Or cell phone reception. Pride yourself a little bit on survivalist chomp. That's scary. Amazing experience. <laughs> Obsessed with desert, well, hot springs, tradition, whatnot. In the middle of nowhere, an oasis of water. It fascinated me. Commonplace. It's huge, giant, upbeat vibe. I'm a life lover. A bit intense morning person. Backstage, I was talking to you very briefly. Backstage is a noun, which means in the area behind the stage in a theater, especially the rooms in which actors change their clothes or where equipment is kept. For example, we went backstage after the show to meet the actors. There is an intensifier. However, intensifier is a noun, which means a word, especially an adverb or adjective, that has little meaning itself but is used to add force to another adjective, verb or adverb. For example, in the phrases, an extremely large man and I strongly object, extremely and strongly are both intensifiers. Briefly is an adverb, which means using few words or without giving a lot of details. For example, briefly, the company needs to cut its expenditure. Backstage, I was talking to you very briefly, and you were sort of talking about how you, you kind of live... Sort of is an adverb, which means in some way or to some degree. For example, I was sort of hoping to leave early today. Kind of is an adverb as well, which means to a moderate degree, somewhat. For example, it's kind of late to begin. And you're sort of talking about how you, you kind of live, uh, you don't live in the city, city part uh, of Los Angeles. You live out in the, in the country a little bit, right? Live out is a phrasal verb, which means to spend the rest of one's life in a particular place or particular circumstances. For example, he lived out his days as a happy family man. So you live out in the in the country a little bit, right? A little bit. I live in this really magical land called Topanga Canyon. Magical is an adjective having a special, exciting quality that makes something or someone different and better than others. For example, there was something magical about that evening that I will never forget. Land is a noun, an area of ground especially when used for a particular purpose such as farming or building. As an example, this sort of land is no good for growing potatoes. In other words, a magical land means a very beautiful and outstanding place to live or visit. Topanga Canyon Topanga in western Los Angeles County, California, United States which is located in the Santa Monica Mountains. The community exists in Topanga Canyon and the surrounding hills. A little bit. I live in this really magical land called Topanga Canyon. Wow. The magical world it of Topanga. It is. There's no cell phone reception. Reception, which is a noun. The degree to which mobile phone, radio, or television signals are strong and clear. Example, the phone reception is really bad out here in the woods. Wow, the magical world it of Topanga. It is, there's no cell phone reception and there's very little internet, it's awesome. Awesome is an adjective, which means extremely good. Example, you look totally awesome in that dress. And there's very little internet, it's awesome. There's a small little public library still. A public library is a library that is accessible by the general public and is usually founded from public sources such as taxes. It is a building where people can read or borrow books without having to pay. The public library service is delivered through local authorities which also provide the bulk of their funding. There's a small little public library still oh, that people cool. go to. And you don't have a television, and do you pride yourself a little bit on, on, on kind of enjoying the land? To pride oneself on something is an idiom, which means to take satisfaction in, be proud of, 
or highly value something one owns, has done, or is renowned for. For example, Janet prides herself on her three Olympic gold medals. And do you pride yourself a little bit on, on, on kind of enjoying the land, living a natural life, would you say? Enjoying is a gerund. A gerund is the ing form of a verb that functions the same as a noun. For example, running is fun. In this sentence, running is the gerund, it acts just like a noun. Living, again, the same, that is a gerund, as I mentioned earlier. On kind of enjoying the land, living a natural life, would you say? Yeah, I love it. I love it. I definitely live a different lifestyle. Definitely is an adverb without any doubt or certainly. I don't like that place. I'm definitely not going back there. Lifestyle is a noun. Someone's way of living, the things that a person or particular group of people usually do. He doesn't have a very healthy lifestyle. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I definitely live a different lifestyle, I would say, than a lot of people I know. Than is a part of comparatives. Adjectives in the comparative form compare two people, places, or things. For example, in the sentence, John is smarter, but Bob is taller, the comparative forms of the adjectives smart is smarter and tall is taller are used to compare two people, John and Bob. In this video, she wanted to say that she has a different form of life or lifestyle if she compares it to others. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I definitely live a different lifestyle, I would say, than a lot of people I know right. or have met. Have met is a present perfect tense. The present perfect tense is a tense used in present to indicate the action that has taken place at some specific time. It uses auxiliary verb and past participle for the main verb, for example, verb plus ed. Some examples of present perfect tense are I have watched this movie before. He has completed his homework. I love it. I definitely live a different lifestyle, I would say, than a lot of people I know right. or have met. But, but you're not like a, would you say, survivalist? You would you say it is used for giving your opinion? As far as filmmaking is concerned, I would say the future is his. Survivalist is an adjective. It is relating to people who practice survivalism, which means preparing for future emergencies by, for example, collecting large amounts of food and learning how to live outdoors. He told his lawyers that his views were influenced by the survivalist movement. I love it. I definitely live a different lifestyle, I would say, than a lot of people I know right. or have met. But, but you're not like a, would you say, survivalist? You a survivalist? Could you live off the land if you had to? Could you live off the land if you had to? Of course, it's a question, but is a kind of if clause. It is the conditional type too. How to form conditional types? specifically conditional type 2, you can say if plus simple past in one part of the sentence and the other part of the sentence should be present conditional or present continuous conditional. For example, if this thing happened, that thing would happen. I love it. I definitely live a different lifestyle, I would say, than a lot of people I know right. or have met. But, but you're not like a, would you say, survivalist? You a survivalist? Could you live off the land if you had to? I think I could. I think. I think is a common expression, very popular expression. It is used to say that one believes that something is true, that a particular situation exists, that something will happen, etc. I think she is nice. Could you live off the land if you had to? I think I could, maybe for a few days, survive. Survive is a verb, which means to continue to live or exist, especially after coming close to dying or being destroyed 
or after being in a difficult or threatening situation. Example, the baby was born with a heart problem and only survived for a few hours. Maybe for a few days survive. I mean, it's one of those things that of course you think you can and then you're in that situation. I mean, it's one of those things. I mean, I mean is an idiom. It is used to emphasize a statement. Example, he has to stop drinking. I mean, he's going to kill himself if he keeps it up. I mean, it's one of those things that of course you think you can and then you're in that situation. You're like, oh my God, how do I make fire? Make fire. Make fire is an expression. So when should we know where to use do or make? Use do for actions, obligations, and repetitive tasks but use make for creating or producing something and for actions you choose to do. Do generally refers to the action itself and make usually refers to the result. For example, if you make breakfast, the result is an omelet. I mean, it's one of those things that of course you think you can and then you're in that situation. You're like, oh my God, how do I make fire again? I forgot this isn't working. Are you comfortable like, can you uh, find berries or anything in the woods that you would eat? Comfortable is an adjective, which means relaxed and free from pain. Are you comfortable or shall I turn the heat down? Are you comfortable like, can you uh, find berries or anything in the woods that you would eat? I'm just curious. Yeah. Curious is an adjective, which means to be interested in learning about people or things around you. Example, I was curious to know what would happen next. Again, I forgot this isn't working. Are you comfortable like, can you uh, find berries or anything in the woods that you would eat? I'm just curious, yeah. like, I'm never comfortable doing that. I, unless because I saw- Because you're afraid it would be poisonous. Unless I... Poisonous is a noun. Poisonous is a substance that can make people or animals ill or kill them if they eat or drink it. The pest control officer put bowls of rat poison in the attic. Yeah. Like, I'm never comfortable doing that. I, unless because I saw, you're afraid it would be poisonous. Unless I saw a that. hamburger growing on a branch. <laughs> unless. Unless is a conjunction, which means except if. You can't get a job unless you have experience. You can only get a job if you have experience. Branch is a noun. It means one of the parts of a tree that grows out from the main trunk and has leaves, flowers, or fruit on it. The fruit on the lower branches was protected from the sun. Poisonous Unless I saw a that. hamburger growing on a branch. <laughs> I, I would, but I, yeah, but I'm, I'd be afraid of eating the wrong thing. I'd be afraid of eating. This is related to grammar. I'd is I would. If you want to be polite, it is good to use it. On the other hand, to be afraid of something means when you are feeling fear or feeling worry about the possible results of a particular situation. You can say, I am afraid of it. Not that we are afraid of something or someone. So grammatically, we need a noun here. In this sentence, I'd be afraid of eating. The word eating is a gerund or a noun. That is why we always need to use it with a noun. Take a look at this example. He was slash felt suddenly afraid. I've always been afraid of flying, heights or spiders. I, I would, but I, yeah, but I'm, I'd be afraid of eating the wrong thing. Are you pretty comfortable saying, oh, that looks good, chomp? Chomp. Chomp is a verb, which means to chew food noisily. Example, he was chomping away on a bar of chocolate. Are you pretty comfortable saying, oh, that looks good, chomp? Yeah, for the most part, I am, except for with mushrooms. Those guys are a little scary because they can kill you. Except for preposition which means not including, but not. The museum is open daily except Mondays. Scary is an adjective. It is something which is making you feel frightened. The idea of surgery was very scary to me. Yeah, for the most part, I am, except for with mushrooms. Those guys are a little scary because they can kill you. Yeah, it can either be an amazing experience. It can either be an amazing or, experience. Or, or your last oh, experience. Amazing experience is an expression. You say that something is amazing 
when it is very surprising and makes you feel pleasure, approval, or wonder. Oh gosh, it was an amazing experience. Last experience is an adjective, which means a final experience before one dies. Yeah, it can either be an amazing experience. It can either be an or, a, or your last <laughs> experience. experience. You tweeted recently, I'm so obsessed with toads. Tweet as a verb to publish a short remark or piece of information on Twitter. He tweeted that he was just about to meet the president to be obsessed with something. It means excessively or solely focused on, preoccupied with, or infatuated with someone or something. Example, a few of my fans seem obsessed with me, but I think they are harmless. Toad is a noun. Toad is a small brown animal similar to a frog that has big eyes and long back legs for swimming or jumping. Toads have drier, lumpier skins than frogs and spend less time in the water. You tweeted recently, I'm so obsessed with toads. Yeah, I am. Let's talk about that. I... Do you like toads? Sure, why not? I think they're great. Great is an adjective, which means very good or very effective or excellent. We had a great time. Yeah, I am. Let's talk about that. I... Do you like toads? Sure, why not? I think they're great. And what is it? What do you like about toads? I mean, first of all, you saw a toad? First of all, is a very common phrase before anything else. First of all, I'd like to ask you a few questions. And what is it? What do you like about toad? I mean, first of all, you saw a toad and I, you... Okay, I was in the middle of the desert in Arizona. We were at some beautiful hot springs. Desert is an area often covered with sand or rocks where there is a very little rain and not many plants. Example, they were lost in the desert for nine days. Hot spring is a kind of spring of naturally hot water, typically heated by subterranean volcanic activity. Example, the area is noted for its hot springs and steam jets. I, okay, I was in the middle of the desert in Arizona. We were at some beautiful hot springs and this toad jumped up and according to like Native American tra tradition, this toad meant, toad meant like good luck and was supposed to bring you messages and whatnot. Jump up is a phrasal verb which means to jump in an upward direction. For example, Mary jumped up defensively. According to preposition, used for saying which person, group, piece of information, etc. provides a particular fact. Example, according to a company spokesman, the firm is expected to have sales of more than $3.5 billion this year. Tradition is a noun. Tradition is a way of behaving or a belief that has been established for a long time or the practice of following behavior and beliefs that have been so established. For example, it is a Western tradition for brides to wear white. To be supposed to is an idiom, to be expected to do something. For example, they are supposed to arrive tomorrow. What not is a noun, which means and other similar things. For example, you can buy snacks and whatnot at the bar. And this toad jumped up, and according to like Native American tra tradition, this toad meant, toad meant like good luck and was supposed to bring you messages and whatnot. But it was just beautiful, and the fact that it could survive in the middle of nowhere in this one small little oasis of water, it just it fascinated me. Fact is a noun, which means something known to have happened or to exist. No one disputes the fact that the accident could have been avoided. In the middle of nowhere is an idiom. Far away from any towns and cities and where few people live. He lives in a tiny house in the middle of nowhere. Oasis of water is a noun. Oasis is a fertile or green area in an arid region such as a desert. The caravan stopped to rest at an oasis. 
Fascinated is an adjective, which means extremely interested. We watched fascinated as he cleaned and repaired the watch. Not that it was just beautiful and the fact that it could survive in the middle of nowhere in this one small little oasis of water, it just it fascinated me. I thought it was a really neat little animal, a little a cool little amphibian. Neat, adjective, free from dirt and disorder, habitually clean and orderly. She kept her room neat and clean. Amphibian is a noun. Amphibian is an animal such as a frog that lives both on land and in water, but must produce its eggs in water. Unlike reptiles, most amphibians possess a smooth, moist skin and lay their shellless eggs in water or wet places. I thought it was a really neat little animal, a little a cool little amphibian. You know what I like? I like getting obsessed, uh, not excited about something that's more commonplace. You know what I mean? Like getting. Getting is a gerund. Gerunds and infinitives can replace a noun in a sentence. Gerund is the present participle or the ing form of the verb. For example, singing, dancing, running. Infinitive, on the other hand, is to plus the base form of the verb. For example, to sing, to dance, to run. Whether you use a gerund or an infinitive depends on the main verb in the sentence. In this example, he could have said, I like to get obsessed or I like getting obsessed. Excited about somebody or something is an expression, which means to be very enthusiastic and eager. They were excited about the prospect. Commonplace is an adjective, happening often or often seen or experienced and so not considered to be special. Electric cars are increasingly commonplace. You know what I like? I like getting obsessed, uh, not excited about something that's more commonplace. You know what I mean? It's like, it's nice. It's nice to say, like, <laughs> look at something in nature and get excited about it. It's nice to say. It is a good phrase to remember. It is used to mean that you feel happier when you say something. It's nice to say that there is someone nearby if she needs help. Get excited about is an idiom which means to be excited about something, to be enthusiastic, passionate, happy about, to look forward to something. Example, I'm really excited about my trip to Hawaii. I can't wait to get there. It's like, it's nice. It's nice to say like, <laughs> look at something in nature and get excited about it. A toad. Yeah. It was huge too. It was I have giant hands. I have giant hands for a woman. And the toad is bigger than my hands. Huge is an adjective extremely large in size or amount. They live in a huge house. Giant is an adjective. Extremely large. I saw a giant earth moving machine in that company. Bigger than is grammatical point. It is related to comparatives. A comparative is the form of adjective or adverb used to compare two things. Noun, subject, plus verb, plus comparative adjective, plus than, plus noun, object. The second item of comparison can be omitted if it is clear from the context. Examples. My house is larger than hers. This box is smaller than the one I lost. A toad! Yeah. It was huge too. It was I have giant hands. I have giant hands for a woman. And the toad is bigger than my hands. Do you walk around measuring things against your... Walk around is a phrasal verb. To walk with no particular goal. Example, we were walking around in the garden. Measure is a verb. To discover the exact size or amount of something. For example, will the table fit in here? I don't know. Let's measure it. Wow. Do you walk around measuring things against your... <laughs> Sometimes, because they're so big, I feel like it's a good way to sort of measure things. I feel like, I feel like is a common phrase, which means to want something or to want to do something. I feel like a cup of coffee. 
<laughs> Sometimes, because they're so big, I feel like it's a good way to sort of measure things. Uh, did, um, okay, so uh, the toad, obviously that was a great, uh, you seem very upbeat and positive. Is that true? Obviously is an adverb in a way that is easy to understand or see. He was in tears and obviously very upset. Seeing is a verb, which means to appear to be. You seem very quiet today. Upbeat is an adjective full of hope, happiness, and good feelings. Example, live music and a parade set an upbeat mood for the official opening. Uh, did, um, okay, so uh, the toad, obviously that was a great, uh, you seem very upbeat and positive. Is that true? Is that the, yeah. that's the, I'm gonna say vibe, but that's what, <laughs> that's what I'm getting, is that you're a very upbeat person. Vibe, a noun, which means the mood or character of a place, situation, or piece of music. The music has a soothing vibe. Get, get here is a verb. Get in this context, means to understand or hear something. I told that joke to Sophia, but she didn't get it. That's the, yeah. that's the I'm gonna say vibe, but that's what, <laughs> that's what I'm getting, is that you're a very upbeat person. I am, I love life. I'm a life lover. Life lover is an expression. Life lover is a person who loves to live. Remember this phrase to make more beautiful sentences as well. For example, you can say, I am a pizza lover. I am an animal lover. I am. I love life. I'm a life lover. That's good. Do you wake up? Do you wake up every day? And because I'm a, I wake up every day and go like, I hate it all. <laughs> I'm like the Grinch. I'm like, I'll get those Whoville people. Do I you? wake up every day and I sing a song or like a little phrase of a song. You know that song? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Phrase is a noun. A phrase is a group of words that is part of rather than the whole of a sentence. The phrase, a not unfamiliar situation, is an example of a double negative. You know. You know is a pet phrase, used as a filler in conversation. Oh, well, you know, I was wondering if you had any jobs for me. I you? wake up every day and I sing a song, or like a little phrase of a song. You know that song, good morning, good morning. Yeah. Every morning. And then sometimes I'll follow it up and I'll say like, exciting day, exciting day. Oh wow, that would not go over in my house. <laughs> follow up is a phrasal verb, which means a further action connected with something that happened before. This meeting is a follow up to the one we had last month. Go over. Go over is a phrasal verb, especially of an action or performance, which means to be received in a specified way. His earnestness would go over well in a courtroom. Every morning. And then sometimes I'll follow it up and I'll say like, exciting day, exciting day. Oh wow, that would not go over in my house. But if there's, <laughs> if there's friends over, I don't do it because I know it's a little bit intense for them. Over or better known as come over, is a phrasal verb, which means to visit someone's home. Ron came over for dinner the other night. Intense is an adjective. Intense means extreme and forceful or of a feeling very strong. He suddenly felt an intense pain in his back. <laughs> if there's friends over, I don't do it because I know it's a little bit intense for them. But when you're working, when you're waking up at like 5.30 a.m. every day and you have to sort of be in front of a lot of people, right. I feel like I have to wake myself up first. That's good. Morning. And I'm not a morning person. Morning person, a noun, is someone who feels awake and full of energy in the mornings. He's not really a morning person. He doesn't even talk before about 11 o'clock. I was talking to you very briefly. I live in this really magical land called Topanga Canyon. There's no cell phone reception. There's a small little public library still. You pride yourself a little bit on 
but I definitely live a different lifestyle. Could you live off the land if you had to? I'm just curious. Yeah. I'd be afraid of eating the wrong thing. Those guys are a little scary. It can either be an amazing experience. You tweeted recently, I'm so obsessed with toads. I was in the middle of the desert. It just, it fascinated me. Do you walk around measuring things against your... <laughs> oh, you seem very upbeat and positive. I am, I love life. I'm a life lover. That would not go over in my house. <laughs> because I know it's a little bit intense for them. That's good. And I'm not a morning person. So much since the first one in 2018. Evolve. To develop gradually or to make someone or something change and develop gradually. Example, did humans evolve from apes? We started off our show. Start